Welcome back to Weather Now. Today we're discussing something called the wet bulb globe temperature. Say that five times fast. <laughs> to tell us more about what this is and why it matters to us in Houston, we have Houston Chronicle meteorologist Justin Ballard joining us again. Welcome back, Justin. Thank you for having me. I can barely say it once, let alone five <laughs> times fast. Wet bulb globe temperature. It's right. kind of in the same category of the heat index in terms of weather variables. So it take is. a moment to explain to us what this is and what's the difference. You know, we talked about a Monday heat index and why heat index is measured in the shade and, and what that means for you when you're talking about being outside in direct sunlight. Wet bulb globe temperature is measured in direct sunlight. Okay. So there are certainly some key characteristics of wet bulb globe temperature that highlight it and differentiate it from heat index. Some, some, would, more say commonly some, some would say some advantages to yes, using the wet bulb globe absolutely. temperature. A little bit more well-rounded uh, use of the wet bulb globe temperature. So first of all, heat index. When we're talking about heat index, temperature and humidity are really what matters with heat index. And then we get into wind, sun, ang sun angle, and cloud cover. We don't really, none of that accounts uh, for heat index. But wet bulb globe temperature accounts for all five of those. Temperature, humidity, wind, sun angle, which mm. is a of course important especially in the summer months and then cloud cover so again this is also measured in direct sunlight so yeah. that variable not explicitly listed but it is measured in direct sunlight so and, it and does make a difference and the wind is important too because i hear this a lot from folks let's say down in galveston mm -hmm. will show a heat index well above 100 they're like it feels fine out here the, yeah. the, the, the breeze is blowing at 20 miles per hour and that's a key the, uh, disadvantage a, of the heat index. Makes a huge difference when you've got a little bit of a breeze. You don't have to have a whole lot, but just a little bit. I want to show you, this is actually current information. You okay. see that wet bulb globe temperature of 86 degrees. We'll talk a little bit more about kind of you know what those thresholds are here in just a moment but this information is is in real time so you see uh, those temperatures uh, heat index of 101 we certainly know how it feels outside yeah. uh, but the wet bulb globe temperature a lot lower than you might would maybe think with those temperatures in the mid 80s uh, right now and you see it updating in real time so this is real current information uh, coming to us from the National Weather Service. So why does the wet bulb globe temperature matter more when it comes to extreme heat? When we're talking about extreme heat wet bulb globe temperature matters because it kind of dictates how much time you should be spending, you know, working, let's say active time during the course of a given hour. So a wet bulb globe temperature of say 80 and higher and 85 certainly counts for that 90 and higher uh, really means that you should only be working 15 minutes or so max wow. per hour in direct sunlight. Obviously that's not really you know, plausible for a lot of people who are working outside. Sure. It also tells you 45 minutes is what you should be kind of resting, taking that time to be in shade and air conditioning, drinking water. Uh, so those are really, that's kind of the most kind of operational use of the wet bulb globe temperature. Okay, and so what, what would be safe and dangerous values? Of, what's kind of the, the dividing line? Yeah, really anything above 80 is when you start going, okay, well now you're spending more time of the course of the hour kind of in rest, quote unquote, than you are actually working and being in direct sunlight. Once you get above 85 and certainly once you get to 90, that's when you're spending a lot more time, you know, kind of parked in shade, hopefully, uh, drinking yeah. water, you know, not exerting yourself as much. I've got a kind of a, a real life example here. So let's just say, this is some hypotheticals here, very certainly we could see this, 100 degrees today, that forecast high I think you said was 101, so mm -hmm. right on the money, mostly sunny. Uh, you see this dew point uh, temperature 70 degrees, humidity of 39%, sky cover of 10%. So again, not a lot of cloud cover to keep you shaded. Winds at 13 miles per hour. Really doesn't matter necessarily with the wet bulb globe temperature what direction is, but heat index of 108 degrees. You see the wet bulb globe temperature 95 degrees. So once you hit above 90, that's when you're talking about maybe you shouldn't necessarily be outside, you know, the entire time. So this is a really important sort of metric for heat safety. Yeah, and so that's one of those things that, you know, if you're looking at that, you're saying, well, 95 doesn't seem that hot. Right. Right, so, so it's, you have to retrain your brain when you're looking at the wet, globe, wet bulb globe temperature scale to yeah. be able to figure out what's really the danger zone. And a number of places, you know, really official places use the wet bulb globe temperature instead of the heat index. It's been in use in the military since the 1950s, so that's just kind of one point. But it's also used by OSHA to establish manual labor and heat safety guidelines. That's what I was kind of referencing. Mm -hmm about the hour, you know, 15 minutes to 45 minutes. Uh, and then high school collegiate athletics also use it to determine yeah. practice times, play times, things of that nature. And then, you know, it may be used obviously for outdoor workers and road maintenance teams. I'm hoping that it does. 
I know, you know, realistically, it may not necessarily be used in some of those applications. Uh, you know, 15 minutes is not a lot of work time. <laughs> yeah, I might start busting it out saying, see, honey, I can't mow the lawn. And see, uh, there you go. Blow, blow. I, I can do it for 15 <laughs> minutes, but it's going to look really weird <laughs> when I only do part of the lawn. <laughs> and it takes me all day. Yeah. All right, anything else about we should know about the wet bulb globe temperature or why it matters to us in Houston? I think heat index right now is probably going to stick. Yeah. I think we're going to continue using that. But something, you know, a little extra to kind of keep in the back of your mind is other sort of metrics to measure heat. Okay, Justin Ballard, the man with the wet bulb globe temperature readings. There you go. Thank you so much for joining us today, <laughs> and we'll see you again next week.